Well, joining us to discuss the legacy of the late liberation icon and founding father of a democratic South Africa is a constitutional law expert, Professor Shadra Guto. And joining us on the phone line will be Executive Director of the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation, Nishan Balton, and Nomazocho Memani of the ANC Women's League. A very good evening to you all and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Professor, let me start off with you. Your highlights are from uh, well, Barack Obama's speech, of course, and other speeches that were given throughout the day. Well, I think it is important to be able to say that the Nelson Mandela uh, lectures are important and they have brought in a lot of people, including the former uh, Professor uh, Wangari Matai from Kenya, who is, uh, uh, you know, who was a uh, Nobel Prize laureate for peace and uh, many others and I've attended some of those lectures, they're powerful. And the lectures which were given today, I think the highlights for me was that of uh, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, but also Grasha Machel, she gave a very powerful presentation at that uh, ceremony. Uh, the only disappointing things about today was that there was, I won't mention who, who thought that the ones giving the address and took a long time talking a lot of things when they were not supposed to do that because this was the address by President Barack Obama. Barack Obama came out powerful and he gave a very powerful address. Uh, of course, he didn't come straight from the US. He came through his ancestral home, which is Kenya. And uh, he's a Kenyan US, you know, uh, connected. Uh, and in that regard, it was very powerful. He talked like an African talking or speaking with Africans. And uh, it was important. And I think he pointed out how we need to move Africa forward. The role of the youth, the role of women in pushing that forward and making a new Africa came out very well. And uh, I enjoyed listening to it. I did go to Wondrous uh, you know, Park to, to be at the place, but I was watching it on the TV and listening to it, and it was wonderful. Well, Nishan, a good evening to you and thank you for joining us. So talk to us about the highlights for the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation from today's lecture by uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama. Well, firstly, for us, uh, um, w w was the opening comments of uh, Prof. Jabolo Ndebele, in which he acknowledged the call made by Ahmed Kathrada when he was a board member of the foundation. Um, uh, Kathrada had called on the NMF to ensure that the lectures of the foundation um, was as inclusive as possible and was, ex was as accessible as possible. And towards the latter part of his term at the foundation, he urged the foundation to in fact host such a lecture in a stadium, making it accessible to all. Um, and, I'm, and I'm very happy that Prof. Jabulo acknowledged um, uh, uh, Kathy's call to the foundation to do that. Specific highlights from the, the lecture itself for me was uh, a reminder of what the world was like when Madiba was born in 1918, which was at the end of the, 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 the First World War. Okay. Um, and the resultant uh, anti-colonial struggle which followed uh, in, in the aftermath of the Second World War. Um, and, and just the amount of global progress that was made towards the end, the end of the 20th century. And he pointed out just how many of those gains are being reversed 
um, in the 21st century with the rise of, of narrow nationalistic leaders um, such as Trump and others today. And I, I think for, for me that, that, that was, was an important warning point for, for, for his speech, that, that globally today we face the rise of right-wing racist, uh, if not fascist movements who have a global character um, and who threaten much of the gains of democracy and development um, for, for, for very narrow, selfish uh, 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 gains. But I think the, the, the conclusion in which he points to the agency of people, the ability of people to, to counter this, this negative uh, direction um, it, it is what perhaps is the most important point for us and for people across the world. Well, Nishan, do stay with us on the phone line as we go across to Noma Zodjo. Good evening to you and thank you for joining us here this evening. Talk to us about uh, what the ANC Women's League could actually identify with in the speeches that were given today. You know, I did not, I did not listen the speech, the, the old speech, because I was at work. However, I have heard, you know, as, as women of South Africa, and then as women were in the struggle, you know, at the time, you know, for those people who did not know what was happening at the time, it was very difficult at that point in time. And then when Madiba took over, I mean, first of all, we exercised our right to vote, which the thing that we ex uh, celebrated a lot as women, mm -hmm. as women in general also in, 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 in Africa, not only in South Africa. And then thereafter, I think what I've also learned I've, I've heard, you know, as I've said, just I've, I've, I've listened a brief, brief, is the, is the equality and justice. Because when Madiba came in, as Madiba indicated that she fought against the white domination as well as fought against the black domination, he tried to bring uh, South Africans together because South Africans, you know, we leave South Africa as white and black. He tried to bring us together by the rainbow nation. And I think he set up a platform, you know, because we needed that as the ANC. We needed somebody to set up the platform so that we are able to move forward, you know, as the country. Although it is unfortunate today, because, you know, when you listen, when you look what is happening, you know, you find that the racism has embedded in this country. You know, it's not what Madiba fought for. It's not what Madiba sought us. In, in South Africa. It is just an unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in this. However, I am not only saying we learn this from Madiba alone. Madiba did not work alone. Madiba went with Abu Tatu Sisulu, the Omgov, you know, the Oliver Tabu served a very long time as the president of the ANC Women's League. I think we need not to forget those people. And also, I think when we celebrate Madiba's 100 years, we must not forget Umamu Sisulu, because there's, not, there's little that is said about Umamu Sisulu, of which Umamu Sisulu played a major role in the struggle in the country. Not only the struggle for women, but the struggle generally for the South Africans, and particularly those who were oppressed. Mm -hmm. Now, just coming back to studio, Prof, um, do you think that the Madiba magic is still alive uh, even today? I mean, uh, Umama mentioned that, you know, some of the things that Madiba fought for are actually um, surprisingly not even in existence uh, in today's South Africa. What can be done to actually continue his legacy? Now, the legacy will go on. I think it is important to underline that this was Madiba Day was declared by the United Nations Organization. It was not just something which is local, it is global. But secondly, I would like to say that I was really comforted by the fact that uh, African entrepreneurs, uh, or you can call them whatever, whether they're billionaires or no, like Patrice, uh, Monsepe Foundation joined together to be able to host this with the Mandela Foundation. So there was an input there, and I think Patrice uh, Monsepe is standing out as one of the leading black African uh, millionaires or billionaires, whatever you want to say, who are philanthropists and that they were trying to develop Africa 
And I think that Ngote was supposed to be here today from Nigeria. He wasn't there, but I think he contributed something to make this a success. So we need to begin to tap into the African uh, entrepreneurs and philanthropists to build Africa. I think that's important. So it wasn't just uh, Barack Obama alone. But Barack Obama did a lot because I think he also has formed uh, a, a strategy of building the future African leaders and has invested in it a lot of money in order to bring young people like you to lead Africa to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but today was also important because I watched who were there at the, you know, it really brought people together uh, from all political formations from other countries, the cabinet, a lot of them were there. So Barack Obama is really for consolidating Africa. It's a pity that when he was president of the USA, the Africa Union did not even invite him to go and address the Africa Union in Addis Ababa. And I think that's part of the weakness of uh, leadership in Africa, that we don't use opportunities to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Even the Kenyan government did not invite him to go and address parliament or in, in Kenya, which is his, uh, you know, father and ancestry and so on. But he passed through there, and I think he's beginning to do more than he did when he was president of the USA. Now that his former president is more free to be able to do a lot of things for Africa, and I think we need to ex exploit that opportunity mm -hmm. in order to move Africa forward. Well, just uh, Nishan, just uh, coming back to you, in, in terms of tomorrow's theme for, uh, you know, the International Day where we celebrate Utata Madiba, the theme for this year is uh, renewing the Mandela legacy and promoting active citizenship in a changing world. How can we achieve this practically? Um, look, look there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a range of initiatives that I think are possible to build active citizenry. Uh, First and foremost, in the South African context, we that, that we are not short of issues around which society needs to be mobilized and organized um, that, that are very prevalent for everybody to see. Um, but I think the immediate opportunities that, that, that come up is the 2019 election. Uh, and, and what those elections actually offer us for the first time now is to be able to build a much more critical electorate who for the first time need to be able to engage political parties to work for their votes. I think previously we had a situation where parties could almost take support for granted. Now, what we've seen in since the local government elections is that the political dynamics in the country are changing and voters, in fact, are the deciding factors, will be the deciding factor in the forthcoming election. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, I think voters can begin to, almost before the elections, make an input in terms of what they think are important in terms of the kinds of leaders that, that need to be put forward by political parties, and will also be able to evaluate, or should be able to evaluate critically party manifestos um, and how that speaks to the day-to-day -day realities. Lastly, we need to build systems of accountability for both the public and private sectors um, to ensure that the kinds of inequalities that the speech, I think, emphasized hugely today are addressed and are addressed meaningfully. So the, the issues are there, the mechanisms for public participation um, and, and, and active uh, citizenry 
uh, need to be built, mm -hmm. and those need to be built by institutions who are not necessarily only within political parties, and that calls on civil society to be playing a much, much bigger role um, than, than, than I think it has thus far in, 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 in South Africa. Civil society played a major role in, 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 in opposing state capture and all other issues of corruption. Civil society has been in the forefront of the fight against HIV AIDS and so forth. Um, civil society has been in the forefront of advancing constitutionalism in this country. Well, thank we you very much. now extend that to a whole range of other areas. Thank you very much, uh, Nishan. Just coming to you, uh, Namazacho, just in about two minutes, tell us what young women and the elderly women can actually do to become active citizens of South Africa. You know, the young women and women can be active in the sense that if they participate, because the Madiba Day is not a Christmas day. I think that's what you must note. Madiba was a politician, and then when we celebrate Madiba Day, we must know that we participate in order to make change in the country. Change in order for young and old women to have, you know, a say in the economy of this country. Change in order to show to ensure that there's a transformation. That change to ensure that we fight racism in this country. I think it is very, very important for us, not only for women, actually, because you know, actually, as I say, that you teach a woman, you teach a, a, a nation. So men, of course, will follow women. You know, there's a high rate of of a, a domestic violence, rape in this country. I think that is what not Madiba fought for. I think we need to participate as women, men and women, to hold each other to ensure that there is a change in this country, to ensure that there's a unity in this country. That's what is important. The economic transformation, we need the economic transformation today more than any other time, because I think this is the challenge that we're facing now, because we've managed to fight against political uh, uh, emancipation, but now we need economic emancipation as women as well as everyone in this country. And in Africa as a whole, actually, because you cannot talk about liberation of South Africa and leave the liberation of Africa. Thank you so much to you and thank you to all of our esteemed guests this evening. Well, that brings us to the end of our bulletin. But remember that the conversation does continue online. So follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Afro World View. My colleague Harold Babalam was up next with Prime Business. But from myself and the Prime Time crew, Salang Litsukhofetzi.